Welcome to part two of lesson three, construction documentation. And we're going to continue on with our discussion of drawing types. And now we're going to particularly look at what drawing types there are in the construction documentation. And we also want to look at why we use different drawing types, the purpose behind each one of these. So let's just look quickly, going back to our little model, which shows the dream house. There's someone imagining their dream house, and there's the final house completed, and the path that in between. Now clearly you can see that there's a number of people there that need information. The plumber needs to know what he needs to do. The electrician needs information. The builder needs information. And of course the the architect or engineer, whoever this individual is, he also needs to have information in order to continue and proceed with the work. So, how do we organize that information? Now, some of you may have difficulty reading this. Uh, the resolution may not be particularly good when it comes to the small writing. And then I suggest you go and download the PDF of this and it'll make it easier for you to actually copy and see what's going on. But if you look at this, the Pantheon over here, this is a two-dimensional drawing. And you can clearly see over here, it's very difficult to see the depth. How, do, how far do these corners project beyond that face over there? We can't tell, can we? We can also not tell how far or how deep the building is. And it's very difficult to tell which areas are round and which are square. These could, in fact, be square columns for all we know. So that is why we produce what we call multi-view drawings. We look at the drawing from the top, from the front, and from its side. And then, now, in construction drawing, we refer to the top view as a plan view. Anything we look at from the top is referred to as a plan view. Anything we look at from the front or sides, we refer to as elevations. And note that the elevations are named according to the direction the view is looking out to. We'll talk about this in a moment again. To learn more on multi-view, here's a YouTube video you could go and watch and find out more about that. What type of plan views do we use in the construction industry? Well, first of all, there's the site plans, which give us the boundaries, the layout of the building, what we refer to as topography, living courts and service yards. Floor plans would give us the, where the walls are located and also in relation to other elements like doors, windows, stairs, any other features that the building has. We also see there's a reflected ceiling plan, which is a view of the ceiling and it um, provides an idea of the fixtures and fittings that are mounted on the ceiling surface. And then of course you have the roof plans, which give us the extent of the roof and the layout of the roof and the, also the layout of the trusses. If you take a look here, here are a number of plan views. And there's a few questions that go along with them here. Yeah, can you identify what each type of plan view these are? After the plan views, we get elevations. Now you'll notice over here, this is referred to as a north elevation. It's one, into, one to a hundred scale. So that's your north elevation. This number over here is the number of the drawing on that particular sheet. Now, if we look across over here at the plan, we can see the north is pointing out there. So this face of the building is looking out in the direction of north, and therefore it is referred to as the north elevation. And you can clearly see it matches that side there. So if you look at these views over here, A, B, and C, can you name these elevations? Then we have sections. Sections 
borrow a cut a slice through so it's sliced through along that line in the building this little tag over here shows us where we can find that sectional view the bottom line of the tag represents the sheet so the drawing sheet in this case it's drawing sheet a4-01 and the drawing on that sheet is drawing number one so you can see it over there that's drawing number one on that drawing its scale is one in fifty and you can see the information contained there now you'll note here that it gives different bits of information that um, help us to see things that we wouldn't otherwise see if we were just looking from the outside of the building so we can see things about the ceiling features of the floor what the, what the floor looks like the walls the height at that point the overhang all these aspects we also can get the pitch of the roof is indicated there the level of the floor and so all these bits of information are carried over which are otherwise not available in plan or elevation now there's a question can you identify more information which the section helps to make clear to us finally we have assembly drawings now assembly drawings provide us with information that is critical concerning the elements we're looking at if we're looking at for example window elements and we want to see how these are assembled into this constructed in the wall so here we can see this is the outside of the building there is the weatherboard coming down this is the head of the window and we can see the lining that goes around the window the architrave we also see the lining the internal lining the jib lining the frame of the building and we can see all sorts of details in here now note this is a one in two scale in other words it's half its actual size which allows us to really see it in good detail now a few key words that we've covered in this lesson we spoke of contours the contours are the outline represent or the bounding of the shape of or form of something now we use it on site plans to represent the shape of the ground levels these are the horizontal planes or lines which represent the distance below or above a given point we use the point we use is sea level so we're always interested when we speak of the levels how high we are above or below sea level topography this is a description of a place or region it's a graphic representation of the surface and the features on a map so it indicates its relative positions or as we speak to of elevations being the height all of these terms are used with regard to site plans and the information on these well this concludes part two of this lecture once again please go to Moodle and there's a quiz that covers what we've talked about here so please go there and complete that quiz and be sure to submit it thank you